I think I like the way Dave's deck is constructed a little bit more, and that's kind of evidenced by the fact that I constructed my deck kind of similar to that. But mm, yeah. um, I, I very quickly, as we were talking about last uh, last match, I very quickly came around to the power of Ragavan, and here we're gonna see it right away. I mean, backing this card up with Dave's is actually pretty absurd um and i think it's a lot of power to put on the game this early on um so i would say boston's probably probably a little advantage because now dave's gonna start in this delver of secrets and i mean he's his plan is to trade of course but he might not have the chance and then you know what, what what's he gonna do so i think yeah. it's a little bit too much yeah and I'm, I'm curious to see which version of ragavan people choose to pick up there's so many versions of every card right now but the oh, yeah. alternate extended art. Have you seen this Ragavan? It's so oh, awesome looking. I need to see it because I have. You might not. You probably don't know. Most people on the internet don't know. I love apes and monkeys. I have an extensive ape collection of all the apes in Magic: The Gathering. So Ragavan, you know, it's it's near and dear to my heart. So okay. I would love to see the extended art one. Okay, I, I'm with you on that. But that brings me to a long time complaint that I've had about oh, Magic cards. We need, and this is very important, everybody. We need more orangutans in Magic: The Gathering. The I agree, that... <laughs> completely. The fact that Octavi orangutan is not Legacy Tier One is a big mistake. A it big really mistake. is. It's nice that we have a monkey and you know uh, uh, a mandrels, right? Because right. we got we got Van, we got hooting mandrels, so we're, we're getting some diversity, but we haven't gotten the full suite yet. So no, we need more. No, I completely agree with you. All right, this is important, everybody. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so Delver flips here with a chain lightning revealed on top. I think I think Ragavan's gonna have to uh, uh, be protected from that. Yeah. So it looks like um, Boston pondered and didn't attack with the Ragavan, which gave the Delver a chance to transform off the chain lightning. Um, if Dave can find a land and potentially maybe back up his removal spell with counter magic because i i have to assume that boston has a some interaction here um uh, i think i think he could be in a really good situation here yeah and um it's kind of funny because what you're talking about earlier that um delver the, the 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 bad matchups have actually gotten better for delver yep. yesterday just yesterday i played against um dave kaplan in our our legacy meetup and i was on goblins and he was on blue red delver um, he did not have Dragon's Rage Channel in her deck because we didn't have the new cards legal for this mm -hmm. event. But um, I got destroyed. <laughs> he crushed yeah. me with Delver. But in the past, yeah. Goblins, Goblins ate Delver decks, right? It used to be, it used to be a lot more difficult. Um, yeah. And these days, I mean, the truth of Delver is that it's shifted away from uh, the tempo deck everyone imagines it to be. It definitely has those elements, but really. The fact is, it exists in the aggro control range, and it can go from either end of the spectrum at once, depending on what how you want to build it. Because there are a million options, and they're all great. And yep. that's part that's part of the reason that we see the level of dominance that the deck has um, has had. So yep. yeah, I, I think that that is definitely indicative of one of the issues. Uh, and yeah, that was just it's just very 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 powerful at the moment. Um, so Ragavan got got uh, chain lightninged, and here is a dash Ragavan. Okay, playing Wasteland to play around days. That's interesting. That that could be good. I mean, getting a treasure is nice. I mean, it's getting around a chain lightning. It looks like Dave is considering potentially interacting with it in some way. Seems like it. Dave's a bit of a of a. I don't know if he actually plays poker, but he feels like a poker player when he's playing Magic. He's all about the bluffing and playing games with your head so we'll see what happens sure, sure. might be pretending he has an answer <laughs> <laughs> let's see um the dash i'll call it a feature of ragavan also makes the card uh i'll say interesting because it it while you can play it on your turn one, you can also late game dash it in an opportune moment, and we're seeing that right now. It's getting forced on a dash. Yeah, totally. And oh, this is it's actually a little surprising to see Boston have the daze here because he could have dazed to protect his Ragavan last turn. 
um, and he didn't. So that means he either drew it or he knew he had the second one, so he was just going to kind of hang back. Um, but this dash drag event does seem a little bit worse. I mean, he has to commit mana to it every turn, so he can't just willy nilly um, wasteland here. But I mean, this is pretty. This is pretty good. I mean, he gets the tall fire. Uh, he gets to target the Delver. I mean, this is this is very potent. I mean, this is what I was uh, just talking about when like I just played against Ragavan, and I was like, wow, this card is pretty impressive. I'm so. just checking right now. R uh, Ragavan, I mean, Dash is a cast, right? It's not an ability. You are casting it. That okay. is correct. Just to make sure. I, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I um, just looked it up. Yeah, yeah. Right as you said it. All right. Just want to make sure we weren't force of willing an ability. Um, <laughs> um, okay. Uh, actually, dude, uh, are they getting... Because um, Chad is saying there's a Revoker target for in the Delver matchup. Is, is that true? I mean, I guess if they play Misha's Bauble, that's the target, right? But you can't name Treasure because it's not a card, quote-unquote. Right. Yeah, I, I don't think naming Ragavan would do what you think it does. I, I just look at the card. It says you may cast this. Yeah, so you so you can cast it with the Dash Bell, so that's not an ability, and then the treasure is not a card. So Right, right, right. right. <clears throat> you can name the Mishka's Bubble, which, you know, is good, but I think, I mean, this is what I was talking about last round. Um, I think one of the problems with Dragon's Rage Channel is that you might have to play some slightly worse cards in order to enable it, and I think Mishka's Bubble is not really, you know, quite good enough. Um, and Ragavan asks substantially less of you, um, but nevertheless, I mean, I, I'm certainly, I, after today, this, this gave me all of, this was everything I needed. For my, uh, you know, my information, I, I've learned a lot today watching this. So Ragavan's so impressed I. me. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm going to be adopting gut shots. I think, I think gut shots going to be a really good direction to go um, as a way to answer it. True. So, but oh, but he's not casting the Ragavan. He's going for the dash, which might have been greedy into the days because he played around days every turn of the game, and this is the first turn he didn't, and um, it didn't work out for him. So. Yeah. That's really interesting to see. He's only down to one Ragavan. He's certainly up on cards, so that there's no no argument there. But Boston is, as right? is Yep, yep. But very interesting. Ben with a question, question about Crocus. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll just let you answer it. No, I don't know. I have, I have no idea. It's a great question. Uh, yeah. it could matter a lot. Caracas could be pretty key against Ragavan. Could also be key at protecting it. You, know, that's... you could also have hands, I mean, a, a hand, that, you know, this doesn't happen frequently, but a hand of triple Delver, land, land, whatever, right, you can imagine. Yep. A, la a hand with triple Ragavan is, is garbage, right? That's also um, true, yeah. So maybe Ragavan won't be a four of, if well, I mean, we don't know yet, but... Well, I guess reframing it, it's not that it's... It's not that it's, it's garbage in, when you're comparing it to Delver, right? When you're just right. like... That's you can't I mean, just deploy yeah. all three of them. But the thing is, if you get to keep one around, the idea is eventually one is going to stick. And then it's going to connect, and you only need one. Right? Delver gets better in multiples, and Ragavan actually kind of does, because you really just want to connect with it. It's like Dreadhorde Arcanist. It wasn't very good when you had a bunch of Dreadhorde Arcanists, because they don't work well together. But in so far as you just need one to resolve, it was very good when you had a lot of them. So I think yeah. I'm starting to see a little bit of that same kind of play pattern here. Yeah. Maybe, 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 uh, maybe now that you've broken it down, it makes a little bit more sense. Maybe, maybe it's actually pretty good to have triple rag in any hand, but it, it will be a consideration. Different. Yeah, totally. Over. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's definitely going to have some deck building. Um, deck building. It's going to be very interesting to see how, how all this shapes up and how this is all built. It's, this is, this is like a very exciting time in legacy, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Delver. I think one of the things I personally want to keep a close eye on is, I don't know if you've seen the, it's an approach to Hogak that uses, uh, discard outlets, like, uh, ooh, what's it called? Lotless Troll and, uh, Putrid Imp, and tries to, like, Red Madness Bask, yeah, Madness Basking Wallers to cast Rendrines and get really aggressive. Yeah. Um, I think that archetype is going to get pretty pretty buffed by the presence of Grief, and I'm actually pretty ha excited to see how that plays out. Um, we completely it's gonna be forgot to mention, too, now there's a red Baskin Rootwalla. Also true, yeah. Yeah, that card's very cool. Yeah, it is. I don't know if it'll be relevant for Legacy, necessarily. It could be, but I don't know. But for Modern, possibly. 
Yeah, I think I think um, in the chat they mentioned that Vintage might be getting more of that because yeah. of all the bizarre buffs, um, true, which true. is going to be it's going to be pretty absurd, honestly. But uh, that that's that's less exciting, you know. That's that's just going to break the format, and we'll see what happens with that, you know. And yeah. Legacy, it's probably not going to be too broken. It's going to be an interesting element to have. But yep. Um, and and like with every set, uh, you know, when when Strixhaven dropped, I don't think. I heard anybody saying, hey, how about this new card, Expressive Iteration, exactly. before the set came out? Um, I'm sure there's some going to be some hidden gems in, in Modern Horizons as well. Yeah, I mean, the talk of the town was uh, the card I can't even remember the name of anymore, with a Bloom Apprentice, right? Like, that was, everyone right. was like, this is going to be the card. And Expressive Iteration turned out to be the breakout card. So, there's and there's a lot of those gems, absolutely. That's an excellent point. And for Modern Horizons 1... And, and I don't want to walk down the whole uh, <laughs> this path again with uh, talking about bannings, but for Modern Horizons one, when the when the set was uh, being previewed, were people talking about Hogak? Were people talking about Ren and Six, or were they talking about other cards? I don't even remember at this point. I think those were two of the cards that drew the attention. I think Arkham's Astrolabe didn't quite get the attention it ended up oh, right, potentially yeah. deserving. Uh, I'm, yeah, the, the more the more I mention cards from Modern Horizons, the more you'll be like, that was in that set? God damn, that set was something else. <laughs> Urza. Urza was Force in that negation, set. Yeah. Plague Engineer, Force of Negation. I mean, just just truly unbelievable cards. But um, yeah, I, I think I think those Hogak was definitely one of the biggest, um, okay. biggest attentions. But yeah, also, Ren and Six is interesting because like it took a... It took a little bit for it to kind of pick up. It's a, it's the kind of called like Oko. That that took a second. Like it yeah. only took a second, but it took a second for people to actually. They had to play one game with it. You know what I mean? Like was when it six was the first the... card previewed from that set too. I think it was the first card they ever showed. You might be right. I, that sounds correct. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I remember and the food thing, and they were like, "What is this?" Set? Right. Yes. Yeah. They make the food, and they didn't say what the food was. You're you're yeah, totally yeah, yeah. right. And you know that that plane walkers are hard to evaluate. Um, yeah. and even for experienced players, it can be really difficult to evaluate exactly what kind of impact it has. But once you play with Ren and Six for a single game or Oko for a single game, you're like, wow, that was actually not a reasonable way for this game to play out. So totally. And, uh, since you mentioned Planeswalkers, we have Grist and then we have, I'll, I'll be honest. I don't remember the names of the other two Planeswalkers off the top of my head, but there are, are three total Planeswalkers in this set. There's Dakon. Oh, Dakon. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dakon. You're an old school player. How could you forget Dakon? Yeah. <laughs> I forgot, Which all, came I forgot about that. Classic. Uh, um, I don't remember the other one at all. I, I don't remember the character's name, but um, I guess Grist is really the one that people are talking about that could be a possibility in Legacy. Um, yeah, think, it looks cool. Do you think that card has any, has, has any legs or is it being overestimated? I, it's, again, just... If it's perfectly topical to bring that up because I could be misevaluating it. It looks oh, like it's course. kind it's of the perfect. It's it looks like it's the perfect power level for like Modern Horizons two to bring into Legacy. It's like an interesting option that's like well designed because it's not like oppressively powerful. The numbers on it look pretty reasonable. Yeah. Um, but it does a lot of cool, different things that get people thinking. I, that seems like the kind of example of Modern Horizons 2 uh, being done correctly. It's possible, like any Planeswalker, that is just going to... And the fact that this one can be tutored up and reanimated and all that crazy stuff. And not yeah. force negation to all... You know, all those weird interactions. Um, might make it a little bit too much. But, in, one, it's not going to be too much compared to Ragavan. I can almost guarantee that. Okay. Or, or brief, honestly. And two... It's it's cool. It's just it's just like a cool, interesting design that's kind of fun to build around. It's it's nice to see that kind of stuff. You know, Nick Fit is um uh, gonna you know want to play that, and uh, Dugas was talking about that in chat in Maverick, and yeah. that that that's all really cool. So, well, we're, we're we're gonna we're gonna bookmark this whole conversation, and in in two years when Modern Horizons three is coming out, we're gonna rewatch it and see how right we are. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> All right, another expressive iteration. We, I, I think that's the twelfth expressive iteration that's been fired off by these two players so far. Yeah, there might have been a hundred of them, roughly. So yeah, you know, yeah. it, they've definitely been going back and forth. Um, I mean, Dave is honestly staying in this pretty well as this game goes on. Like he's yep. losing, he's been losing traction kind of every turn, but he's just barely staying alive, and he only needs to stay alive for just long enough. 
Um, I did get a glimpse of Boston's hand for a second. It looks like he has Force of Will and Days. Um, okay. I could be mistaken, but uh, that's definitely going to make it a little bit difficult if he can't, um, you know, successfully defend against his Delver Secrets. But a Dragon's Fate channel here would be pretty decent, at least for a turn. Oh, it looks sure, like that yeah. might be what he has, because it, it would block. No, he's a Lightning Bolt. I would expect... Okay, I don't know. If, if his hand is literally Force of Will Days in a blank, I might have Force of Will that, because, like, uh, your, your opponent's life total might be low enough, but... Um, it, it, I could I could have missed saw what was in his hand, and maybe he has like an ethereal forager instead, and that's worth protecting. Oh no, he knows he has a young pyromancer on top there. Okay, that makes sense. Yep, young pyromancer seems to be the key card in the blue red delver mirrors so much of the time. It is a it is an important one because it's a lot more resilient. Um, I think Sprite Dragon is another one that yeah. I mean, in in my first game with Boston, uh, I just won the game out of nowhere because I had Sprite Dragon kind of go off. Yeah, um, that's true. but but Don Pyromancer can do the same thing, yep. so it, you should never knock it out. And I think, you know, I, I think this is one of uh, again what I was talking about a little bit. Misha's bauble. I mean, it's getting a counter on the spike dragon. It's doing a little bit here, but it is you know at this stage of the game not a super impactful card. It's not even a particularly good cantrip. So, um, I mean, I, I think that could be a cost in the deck building that has to be considered. So. Yeah, there are a lot of creature options for Blue Red at this point. I mean, there's just so many different choices. Oh, when he's drawing a brainstorm, yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be tough to beat because he only has one card in hand. Spike Dragon, I don't know what his life total is, but he might have to just turn it sideways and just hope to start racing. That's kind of where my head would go to. Yeah, I agree with this play. Yeah, we're at we're at the point where uh, Delver players are like, oh, uh, yeah, I cut True Name Nemesis because yeah, you know, there's this <laughs> other commander card that I decided to put in. You know, <laughs> yeah, getting, absolutely. It's getting kind of weird. It is getting extremely weird. Um, and I mean that's that's part of the that's part of the issue. That's part of why I wrote my article. It's like there's just so many different options, and it makes Delver a little bit too too oppressive at times. A little bit. Um, okay, brainstorm on the stack here. Another dinosaur comes down. Charmander. Yep, I, I like the, I like the RK post Charmander tokens. Yep, those are nice. All right, coming in with Pyromancer. Yeah, it's it's definitely looking like. Um, at least in the mirror. Building your deck like Boston did is providing a spare advantage in the mirror. Um, so I, I'm pretty, I'm pretty impressed with how that's playing out. Uh, it's like black, I black think, shadow. I think it's so. I'll give uh, everybody a little hint into my Modern Horizon spoiler article. I wanted to poke a little bit fun at uh, the silly Death and Taxes players that thought they might be getting a rest in peace. Uh, hate bear because instead they gave it to a, a black black card so I did the entire review for that card as if it was good for death and taxes when um, obviously it's a mono black card so it's not really good for death and taxes um, but yeah I think I think that card is I think that card's good it's just what decks can support black black it's a, it's a little bit difficult um, and I, I completely forgot about this and, th and thank you Sean for pinging me we do have Esper Sentinel humans deck on standby here, so we could possibly do a round four um, and try that out, depending on if everybody wants to, whoever wants to stick around. Um, I, I I have beverage. I'm feeling good, so right. I'm down. I'm, I'm down to see some diversity. All right. Well, maybe we'll see Esprit Sentinel humans next. Completely forgot about that. All right. Anyway, back to the game. We are underway here, and a bolt took out a Delver. Yeah, it looks like I took out a Delver. Um, I don't know how Dave played his Misha's Bauble. Um, there's a lot of interesting ways to do that. But this is this is a good start from Dave. Um, leading Delver into Spike Dragon is going to put Boston to the test right away. So that's pretty cool. Yep. Um, I'm just going to just have to get this deck list in here for this Humans deck. Okay. Um, 
All right, so looks like it met a lightning bolt and then the volcanic met a wasteland, but here we go, second spike dragon. That's this is pretty good, honestly. And yeah, uh, Austin also accidentally good. dropped a he accidentally dropped a um, bedlam level onto the table, so we know we ha he has that in hand. But, uh, Boston. Yes, yeah, okay. he he accidentally flipped that on the table. So, but it looks like he's thinking about dazing this uh, spike dragon, which. He might have to if he doesn't have another answer. Spike Dragon gets out of hand pretty quickly. Agreed. Nope, nope. Let it resolve. Just gonna, you know, poke in for one. It Soon to be in, seven. In common with Pyromancer, if you if you leave it unchecked for a few turns, it's gonna kill you. Yeah, most certainly. Um, I think the thing with Spike Dragon versus Pyromancer... The fact that Spike Dragon is, like, not a particularly good defensive card definitely makes it... It depends on how you're kind of approaching. Young, Young Pyromancer is a more defensive card, and it's better against, you know, decks with spot removal in general. But Spike Dragon just kills so quickly. I mean, a few weeks ago when I was here and we saw Roland uh, play against Phil, and he just threw all his force wills to protect his Spike Dragon, and he just got over across the table, you know, for five or six damage for two turns in a row. And that was just good enough. So. Yep. Yep. Um, okay. Getting this deck into cardboard live for next round. I got this humans list with Esper Sentinel, everybody. It's got Elite Spellbinder in the list. Oh, nice. And uh, we'll look at more of it later. Bear with me here. Are you a fan of the card Mana War? Big fan, big Man of War fan. What about you? Uh, well, I'm I'm a big fan, but I went to a paint and sip, and I had the opportunity to do this gorgeous. Oh, raise it up, raise it up. <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh, nice. <laughs> this gorgeous painting. We uh, the the goal was to paint the jellyfish, and you know, not many other people there were magic players, and my mind went to Man of War, so I got nice. this beautiful Man of War ready to go. <laughs> That's awesome. Is that going on eBay? Oh man, I, I listen. I I could always use an extra five thousand dollars, uh, <laughs> but I think I gotta hang that one up. <laughs> All right. All right. Again, yeah. as I mentioned, a lot of clout. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Put it on China Fireball. <laughs> yes, of course. Well, uh, you know, okay. in, in in a couple of years, maybe maybe you'll sell it for a million bucks. Who knows? Listen, I accept that. <laughs> Uh, looks like the Spike Dragon met a Pyroblast, and then a day's traded with something here. It looks like maybe a Delver Secrets, and the, they're following up with the Young Pyromancer. This is pretty good. Expressive Iteration here is pretty good for them. So uh, that's pretty nice. Yep. Oh, yeah, I'd bet on the original art, too. Uh, on the original art? Yeah, uh, they're asking if uh, the paintings of the Ragavans will appreciate value faster. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. So, Expressive Iteration resolved. He's excelling a Delver, um, but he, not, he did not find a land. This is, this is a bad spot to be. Um, this, this can be really difficult for the Delver player. Um, I don't know. So, I don't know. My deck tonight had... 17 lands. I trimmed on lands because I was trying to build my deck a little bit more lean. I don't know how many Dave has here. Um, which one? This is Dave's deck. So for... Looks like he has 18 lands. So he is going a little bit lighter. Um, he also has no wastelands. So... He, but he's, he's definitely getting choked out of mana here. So that's a big deal. And that, that's another thing. Um, like... I built my deck with less wastelands in it because Dragon's Very Channeler and Mishra's Ball Ball kind of want you to cast a lot more spells and Wasteland yeah. doesn't really tap for anything. But in doing that, the the question is, am I building my deck in a way that's a little bit worse than, um, you know, other Delver decks? Because now I'm just like reinventing the wheel a little bit much to make Dragon's Very Channeler better because I have the Mishra's Ball Balls and stuff like that. While the Boston approach of of the evening to have Ragavans, just she just gets to play a Delver deck with Ragavans in it. Um, 
and not really make any changes. So uh, I definitely think that that's another point worth considering. A Hydro Blast is getting dazed on the Blazing Volley to try to take out the young Pyromancer. Yeah, so I have to imagine he has a second daze. It seems like it. Okay, Boston fetching here to pay the one. Yep, another daze. Okay, so that's that's at least getting through this stage, but I mean, he's going back to very few lands in play, and we know that Boston has a Bedlam level in hand because he accidentally dropped it on the table earlier, and that's going to be a pretty good card for him to have here. Yeah. Hydroblast against the player with the Hydroblast Pyroblast mat is uh, something on some bingo card somewhere. Oh, definitely. Brainstorm for Boston. I think that's yep, the seems... sixth spell now, if I'm counting correctly, roughly here. Yeah, I mean, Hydroblast, uh, Boston Zek is pretty well tuned for the mirror. I mean, Hydroblast is, I mean, it, it has its other uses, but um, you definitely want it for the mirror match. So, um, especially with like Ragavan uh, upping in popularity. So maybe that's a card we're going to be turning back to. Yep. All right, Bedlam Revel on the stack. See if Dave has a response to that. I don't think there will be, though. It just got into days. That makes sense. That could be a game winner right there, that Bedlam Reveler. Yeah, it's really difficult to interact with. Um, it Drawing three cards is a pretty big game. I mean, Dave is really under the gun here. I got to update life totals. I'm way off. Yeah, Hydro Blast is good against Blood Moon, but that doesn't matter so much from Blue Red Delver. Like, they don't really care too much about Blood Moon, but... Is Forager and is it staple? I would say so. Something yeah, like I think I think this... Um, I mean, I think things are going to change because of Ragavan and Dragonflight Channeler. People are going to be building their decks in different ways, but I think as of right now... Pre Modern Horizons 2, I would call Forge the stable. But uh, in the future, you know, things might change a little bit. But uh, Boston's deck has both, and uh, they're both very good. So, yep. Maybe, maybe Forger gets sided out here for Bedlam Reveler. Is that possible? You know, I saw, I saw when I played against Roland a few weeks ago, he took out uh, Ethereal Forges in the mirror, and I couldn't really stomach the idea. Like, I mean, it makes sense because it dies to Lightning Bolt, but at the same time, it is kind of... It is it is kind of odd, because it is very powerful if you ever on top with it, even if it dies to everything. Most of your effects die to everything, so... Yeah. Um, but it, it is possible he took it out. No, he, he had it in against me in the second game. Or in the third game. So, uh, yeah, he probably still has it in his deck. Gotcha. All right. Chat seems to think that Forager is a staple right now. So. Yeah, I mean, it, it's very good. It's a very strong card. Expressive iteration being resolved here, I believe. Yep. I mean, I, I don't want to jump the gun too early, but I would say Dave's going to have to jump through a lot of hoops in order to come back in this. Facing down a Ragavan, Bedlam Reveler, uh, Boston still has so many cards in hand. He's exiling that. He gets another card in his hand, so he still has four cards. He's up two lands and a really potent threat. This is going to be quite challenging for Dave. Yeah, agreed. But, yeah, I, I, I'm pretty impressed with the way his deck is built uh, tonight. Yep. Boston maybe on the verge of a 3-0 so far. Yeah, so yeah, totally. For the, uh, for those of you that have been regularly watching 90s MTG streams, Boston has been tearing it up. Boston is consistently crushing it on this stream with uh, Delver decks. Um, so if if Boston's running, much like yourself, Rich, if Boston's running the Ragavans, they're they're probably really good. Yeah, I'm 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 pretty impressed. This is I wanted to get this kind of insight as to how the cards were going to play out before it came out of Magic Online, and this this is definitely giving me a lot of information about how, how this is going to play out. 
Um, when when do they come out of Magic Online anyway? Very this soon. Week? Yeah, it's Thursday, I think. Maybe oh, okay. Wednesday. So it's very soon. Okay. Yeah, most certainly. And then they they pushed back the Legacy Showcase Challenge, which uh, I'm not gonna for the chat who doesn't don't know what the show the difference p- between a showcase challenge and a normal challenge is. It's very complicated. Uh, the path that qualifies you for the mocks, but regardless, it's a it's a higher stakes tournament. They pushed that back to this upcoming weekend from this previous Sunday because Magic Online crashed and didn't work, so they uh, couldn't okay. run the event. So they they pushed that back. Are you going to play in it? No, I wasn't going to play in it yesterday because I had to go paint the beautiful Man of War. Uh, oh, nice. And then, oh, yeah, and then, oh, cool. yep, yep. And then, uh, no, I'm, I'm not afraid this weekend. But it's going to be okay. cool to see what people come, come up with. Yeah, yeah, it will be. It will be. A lot of people have been maybe lightly complaining that it's going to be challenging to acquire cards from the new set because it's uh, just coming out of Magic Online two days before, and they're going to be really expensive. Um, oh, okay. And, and that is a problem. But from a player perspective, from an observer perspective, it's way more exciting to see the new cards kind of get used yeah. and how people are going to build them. So I, I'm pretty cool with that. Yeah. I mean, as, as someone that doesn't use Magic Online but likes looking at lists, I'm very excited about it. Yeah, this is perfect for you. <laughs> perfect for me because I can't play anything. So. Yeah, perfect for you too. Perfect for everybody. Um, all right, Pyromancer and Delver now. Yep, after a petty theft on the Bedlam Reveler, but the fact that he didn't recommit the Bedlam Reveler when he had the uh, available mana means the remaining two cards are probably spells, um, which is good not time. a good sign for Dave. Not a good yep. sign for Dave. Bolt on Pyromancer is something. Inform off Brainstorm. Okay, I need to get on top of life totals here. It looks like Dave's at eight. Brainstorm. It seems almost inevitable for at some point Boston to find another wasteland to really kind of uh solidify the crunchy setting right now on Dave. Yeah. A he wasteland here wait- would just be completely yeah. just game over. Yep, totally. I mean, it, this is already very close. Uh, he's not recasting the Bedlam Reveler yet. So, I mean, again, that's still not a good sign. Yeah. All right, Scalding Tarn changes that at least a little bit. Raisin Borrower can come down and block, potentially. I don't know how likely it will be to resolve, but yeah, he's going to cast it now. Main phase, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it's it makes some sense. Uh, he only has two cards in hand. There's a braid. I don't know what his life total is, but it can't be that high. Is that Cat- seven now I have? Yeah, so Young Power Manager into a braid, attack. There should be no way for Dave to get out of this. No. Yep, and that'll do it. All right. Game three goes to Boston. I'm going to jump back into Zoom. In yep, uh, I'll have to also be reinvited. Let me join that. Cool. Good games. What's up, guys? Hey, Chris. Um, I finally got to show off Bedlam Reveler. You did. You did. Bedlam Reveler uh, looked outstanding there. 